I consider myself to be fortunate to have taken this call in 1982-83 when India was just on the cusp of change. So 1995 friends, we entered into a joint venture with a global investment bank called Goldman Sachs and that was Goldman's first joint venture anywhere in the world. I still recollect my first trip to the United States at in 1992 and I had gone there to meet Goldman Sachs and that meeting was a uh, life-changing meeting for me in many ways. This man would be one aspiring cricketer who would turn into Asia's richest banker. One middle class boy who would revolutionize the way Indians save and invest. One self-made billionaire who dominates the entire Indian banking sector today. His name is Uday Kotak. Uday Kotak. Uday Kotak. Uday Kotak. One of India's uh, most influential veteran bankers, Uday Kotak. Uday Kotak, MD and CEO of Kotak Mahindra Bank. Uday Kotak. The year is 1959. On the 15th of March this year, in an upper middle class Gujarati joint family, a boy named Uday was born. He is living with 60 members under one roof. I am in a Gujarati joint family, 60 people in one kitchen and one house. The family is primarily engaged in cotton trading but eventually diversifies into trading other commodities. Though his family could afford to send him to any of the top schools, they chose to send him to a modest institution, Hindi Vidya Bhavan, mainly because the school has been inaugurated by one of the nationalists in whose principles the Kotak family firmly believed. Since childhood, young Uday was passionate about cricket, mathematics and sitar. It is said that his first love was playing cricket and the second was playing sitar. But above all passions, his love for numbers has been growing the fastest day by day. He got into Sydney for a four-year BCom course after which he enrolled for an MBA degree from Jamnalal Bajaj Institute of Management Studies. Uday chooses his passion as a fuel to kickstart his career. He decides to pursue cricket as his long-time career and he is now the captain of his college cricket team. But as it is said, right, life is what happens to us when we are busy making other plans. While Uday was aspiring to fulfill his passion, life had unlocked doors to knock him down. It is September 1979. Uday Kotak is playing cricket in the Kanga League. He thwacked the ball and goes for a run. A fielder throws the ball back to the stumps and it hits Uday hard on the head. He is immediately rushed to the hospital where the doctor informs his parents that he has a brain hemorrhage. The situation is damn serious and there is low hope left for him to survive. Just prayers all around. The surgery is successful but it changes the course of his career forever. This incident that almost killed him did not only cost him one year but also marked the end of his wistful cricket dreams. After not being able to attend college for one whole year, Uday decides to join his family business. But he isn't comfortable with this fact that every decision of his needs an opinion of 14 other family members. Working with his family business proves to be a great business experience, but he soon realizes that it is not his cup of tea. The lessons which are extremely important about dealing with human beings extremely early and the power of that joint family experience of 60 people in uh, under a single roof has held me in very good stead over the last 50 plus years. After completing his MBA and swearing to never go back to his family business, Uday is now all set to join Hindustan Unilever as his first job. Sometimes it is the people who no one imagines anything of are the ones who do those things that no one can imagine of.
But just before stepping into Hindustan Unilever for his role, fate threw a spin ball when Uday's family was astonished to see his financial skills and they offered him with an office space of 300 square feet where he was free to do his own thing. And therefore, using the platform of the family business which had an office at Flora Fountain and which was ready to give me 200 square feet of office space was a good enough lure for me to start an entrepreneurial journey. Without any second thought, Uday decides to set sail with his core skill, his strength by venturing into financial industry. He sets up a small financial agency at the young age of 23 with a business model under which he provides financial support to distressed firms. His innovative business models are about to create wonders that will soon shock the entire Indian banking sector. I was always passionate about financial services, though really didn't know what I was going to do. And like every entrepreneur, I grabbed the opportunity of saying, yes, I want to start something my, on my own in the area of finance without having any clear plan of what financial services I was going to do. The year is 1986. The conventional banking business model was of charging high interest rates to borrowers and providing low interest rates to savers. The difference is the spread on which the bank made money. After achieving initial success here, Uday aspires to scale the business and this led him to initiate a bill discounting business and name his venture as Kotak Mahindra Consultancy Limited, only to later rename it as Kotak Capital Management Finance Limited. He borrows a seed capital of $80,000 from his friends and family. However, to everyone's surprise, an investment of rupees 1 lakh came from from the renowned businessman and his dearest friend Mr Anand Mahindra due to which the company got to be known as Kotak Mahindra Consultancy Limited in the mid 1980s bank spreads used to be 10 to 11 percentage banks used to borrow at 6% and lend at 17% Nelco a Tata company used to borrow money for 90 days at 17% through bill discounting using his most powerful asset that is his mind Uday Kotak seized the opportunity by acting as an intermediary and made wise money he convinces his friends and family to lend him money at 12% which was in turn lent out to Nelco at 16%. It was a win-win for everyone. The repositors earned 12% versus the 6% which they earned on bank deposits and Nelco could borrow at 16% at 1% lower than other banks. Wo samay maine dekha ki banko sabse achhi company ko bhi 17% pe paisa de de aur depositor ko 6% deposit de The year is 1989. After setting up a discounting business, he continues to take breathtaking risks. Uday Kotak now makes his entry into the auto finance industry to diversify into different subsectors. Once again, he with his innovative and customer-centric mind devised an opportunity to clock quick gains as a middleman, and this time at the receiving end of his competitive business acumen was one of the finest global banks, Citibank. When stranded in uncharted waters and the tide soars, if the wind will not serve, you take to the oars. But how did Kotak compete with a giant like Citibank within just three years of incorporation? In the 1980s, Citibank is the only bank disbursing car loans, and the lending rate is around 27 to 28 percent. There is no way Kotak Mahindra could compete against Citibank, but Citibank has one constraint, which Uday will soon attack to change the game. City could lend against cars only when the cars are available and cars were in short supply in India in the 1980s. Kotak Mahindra started buying and booking cars in advance which took around 6 to 8 months to get delivered. They didn't charge customers a premium on the car. Then what was that one main condition? The customer has to take a loan from Kotak Mahindra. The car finance business was where the big spread of the lending profit was and fierce Uday Kotak will leave no stone unturned to slaughter any biggest competition heads on till 1989 friends in India nobody financed cars the cars were not financed by banks or anybody else so we started we at that stage we saw is small little bank which some of you may have heard called city bank had started car financing so city bank had started car financing and was doing it at a flat rate of interest which was 13% per annum
by the end of 1990s Uday Kotak was one of the most respected names in the entire finance industry nearly every big deal in the sector came to his firm be it a banker financial advisor or a businessman everyone sought him for financial advice and any foreign companies seeking to invest big money in india rang his doorbell before finalizing any deal the year is 1991 At the other end of the spectrum, India is dealing with a severe financial crisis where major Indian banks and financial institutions are collapsing and the economy is now on the verge to fall apart. To reboot the Indian economy, the government introduced the LPG policy. While major business conglomerates wobbled to accept the change, astute and agile Kotak's faith in LPG policy moved the mountains when he dug his way to the gold mine and Kotak decides to go public in December 1991. All the people have same hours in a day and the rich man's life has no day eight. In all life's battle always remember you are twice as armed when you fight with fate. But as soon as Kotak set his smooth ride on the sail it looked like another storm was on its way to break him down. On 23rd April 1992 the headline biggest scam in the history of India comes to light penned down by the journalist Suchita Dalal. The stock market tumbles to its lowest and voices on Dalal street are mourning for the losses they suffered. From business tycoons to institutions to banks everyone felt it was the end of an era. The very next day Reserve Bank of India announces bill discounting and rediscounting as a business activity is banned for any NBFC. More than 85% of the court the business which is in bill discounting now comes to stand still some of you may be aware of it 1992 saw a famous a uh, scandal in the capital markets by which is popularly known as the harshad mehta scam and it came out of the blue and at that stage friends more than 85% of our business and please don't compare it with demonetization More than 85% of our business was bill discounting. Was it time for Uday Kotak to bow down and surrender to fate? No. Instead, undaunted and bold Uday Kotak pulls off the impossible. He goes for a joint venture with Goldman Sachs, the bluest of the blue Wall Street firms, and that too for a mere 25% stake. Not stopping here in the year 1996 tie up with Ford Motor Credit Company and a joint venture with Mahindra Group will now result in a JV with Kotak Financial Limited for the car financing business. So off we went scouting for global partners in to get into joint ventures which would enable us the ability to take our firm to the next level. So 1995 friends we entered into a joint venture with a global investment bank called Goldman Sachs and that was Goldman's first joint venture anywhere in the world in the area of investment banking and securities which is what we went into a joint venture and 1996 thereafter when the spreads on car finance had begun to shrink we thought it's important now to get into efficiency and learning how it works so we went into a joint venture with Ford Motor Credit Company their auto finance arm and the two joint ventures actually happened in 1995 and 1996 and this was a very important turning point The year is 1998. Uday Kotak now eyes on the nascent mutual fund industry in India which is about to change the entire landscape. He floated Kotak Mahindra Asset Management Company. By the year 2000, Mumbai's high powered financial market is the land where KKK ruled. This is the Kothari Company Kotak Group that walks the talk when it comes to India's corporate finance boardrooms and the investment banking industry. Devendra Kothari from DSP Merrill Lynch, Nimesh Company from JM Morgan Stanley and Uday Uday Kotak from Kotak Mahindra Finance. They are the heads of three dominant and unshakable financial powerhouses of India. If it's the MGM, which is Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and Merrill Lynch that rules on Wall Street, here it's the KKK that rules the Lal Street. Nearly 99% of all Indian IPOs in that period were done by either one of the three Ks. Uday Kotak once quoted, "This is beauty about entrepreneur's journey. One keeps on getting surprises out of nowhere." The year is 2002. NBFC crisis hits the Indian economy. India, which 
featured over more than 6,000 registered NBFCs in the year 1997 came down to just around 25 NBFCs. And among all of them, standing indomitable was Kotak Mahindra Financial Services Limited. Undeterred Uday now realizes the vital importance of the banking industry in a flourishing consumer market like India. After having established himself firmly as a service provider in the non-banking sector for more than a decade, he now thinks it's time to make his entry into the Indian banking sector. Uday observes that the sector is controlled by ineffective state-owned banks and also the helplessness of the foreign banks to open new branches due to regulatory issues. He analyzes that since RBI has barricaded foreign banks from acquiring more than 5% of any domestic banks, his bank will grab its market share majorly at the cost of the state-owned banks. He applied for a banking license with the RBI and finally got the approval to start a new bank. On 22nd March 2003, RBI approved licenses for two financial institutions. One was was Yes Bank and the other one was Kotak Mahindra Financial Services Limited. Kotak Mahindra has now become the first Indian NBFC to get a banking license in the history of the Indian financing sector. This banking license allows Uday to operate six different businesses from a single dais. As quoted by Uday Kotak himself, a dramatic change has taken place in India. This nation of savers has turned into a nation of investors and spenders. That's an exploding opportunity for a banker. Uday Kotak is ferociously determined to become the banking kingpin of ushering India. In in 2006, he bought back 25% stake held in a joint venture with Goldman Sachs for $72 million and it proved to be a game changer for his entrepreneurial journey as it allowed Uday Kotak to access all the institutional clients. The year is 2014, groundbreaking events took place and Uday Kotak saw his wealth grow almost double-fold post Kotak Mahindra bank shares hitting an all-time high after he sealed a $2.4 billion deal with rival bank ING Vaishya Bank partly owned by Dutch Financial Services. Services Group ING. The biggest proxy for India's growth story is the banking and financial services and the conservative banker Uday Kotak of Kotak Mahindra Bank now tops the list. If the stock price is not going to be able to do it, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Last time, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. So, therefore, logical cheese is without any emotion, without any doubt. What do you think? Kotak Bank is not going to be able to do it. राइट एक्सेस कैपिटल लेके उदय कोटक जी बैठे हुए हैं बिजनेस अच्छी तरह चल रहा है स्टॉक प्राइस नहीं मूव कर रही आसान चीज क्या करना है हमको ज्यादा पोजीशन बनानी है तो ये हमारा काम है निवेश वो इसको कहते हैं निवेश ये नहीं कहते कि स्टॉक भाग रही है मैं भी भाग रहा हूँ स्टॉक के साथ स्टॉक गिर रही है मैं भी बेच रहा हूँ उसको निवेश नहीं कहते उसको इमोशनल इन्वेस्टिंग कहते हैं उससे जिंदगी में ज्यादा कुछ बन नहीं पाएगा the year is 2015. Uday Kotak forays into the general insurance business by partnering with the telecom tycoon Sunil Mittal's Bharti Airtel to offer a small payments bank to Indian masses. Courage to do things that you're shit scared of comes after you do, not just think of. Think big and execute quick. The graph of miracle often looks like a hockey stick. The now Indian richest billionaire banker having managed to gracefully sail through all crises that the banking sector suffered from in the past decades signifies that Uday Kotak is the true epitome of everything happens for a reason. Had he not met with the accident and been operated on, he would have grown up to become a cricketer and maybe the country would have been devoid of the revolution that he and his companies have created. Today, Mr. Uday Kotak is the Executive Vice Chairman, MD and CEO of the Kotak Mahindra Bank. He is also committee member of the Primary Market Advisory High Level Committee on the Securities and Exchange Board of India. As per the Hurun List 2022, he is the third richest banker in the world and the richest banker in India with a net worth of $16 billion as of March 2022. The billionaire's wealth has seen an increase of a whopping 270% in the last 10 years. Kotak Mahindra Bank has evolved into a financial conglomerate providing financial assistance like commercial banking, insurance, broking services, asset management and asset reconstruction. What once started as a company with three members that lent and borrowed money has now turned into a giant institution with more than 71,000 employees and consisting of successful companies under the Kotak brand. I do believe that entrepreneurship is about building a sustainable institution over a long period of time and it has to outlive individuals.
So this was the entire documentary of Mr. Uday Kotak. If you do like these kind of videos, let us know in the comment section who's the person whom you would want us to make a video on and we'll definitely do that in the coming episodes. If you have any feedback for us, please let us know in the comment section and please like and share this video with all your friends and subscribe to our channel so that we can create more kind of documentaries for all of you. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is Create Media signing off.